Hi, so today I'm gonna read to you Ida Always by Karen Levis and Charles Santoso. And I am in a little parking lot near my apartment. Um, there's a hairdresser by me and they have a cute little area, like garden with all the pretty flowers. And I just thought it was a really pretty night. I haven't been reading as much lately because one, I didn't want to do my hair and makeup and two, there's so many people downtown I feel a little silly, but I need to get over that so you guys can hear some good books. But again, this is Ida Always. And it says it's for Eddie and Elise, or Elsie, sorry, Elsie, and Carl and Margaret who are together and with me always. It's for my grandma and grandpas and special thanks to my incredible editor, Emma Ledbetter, for wandering over every word with me and Narmada Tripathi for welcoming these bears and Adi Nashi for sparking the story. I'd always, I can make an inference that this is New York City just because I can tell with the huge buildings and then this area gives it away with Central Park. If you've never been to Central Park, it's amazing. Gus lived in a big park in the middle of an even bigger city. Buildings grew around him and shifted the shape of the sky. Zookeepers poked in and out, visitors came and went. But every morning when keys clicked and shoes clacked, Gus crawled out of his cave and spent his day with Ida. Ida was always right there, always. When Gus tossed the ball, Ida was there to catch it. And when Gus splashed water, Ida was there to splash him right back. They chased and raced until school bells rang. Then the two friends flopped on their favorite rock while the city pulsed around them. I wish we could see it, Gus sighed. You don't have to see it to feel it, said Ida. Listen. They heard buses groan, trucks rumble, police whistle, taxis honk, pigeons coop. People say, hey, wait, yo, hello, and children laugh. That's the city's heartbeat, said Ida. It's right here with us always. If you've ever been in a city, I like the noise the city makes. Like Paris, New York City. Chicago. Some people don't like that. I do. When the sky grew dark, Gus and Ida waved goodnight and crawled off their caves. With the subways humming underground, they added their snores to the sounds of this, their city. Every day was always the same. Kind of probably how you feel during quarantine. Until one morning when keys clicked and shoes clacked, Gus crawled out. And it says crawled out dot dot dot, which makes you tell tells you something's gonna happen. But Ida wasn't there. Gus lumbered into Ida is Gus lumbered into Ida's cave. He heard her breathing, coughing, and snoring, sleeping. He sat in their sunniest spot and waited. The coffee carts ground their beans and the squirrels squabbled over crumbs. Visitors shuffled in, keepers bustled about. Ida never slept so late. Snow monkeys and taxi cabs screeched. Ice cream trucks jingled. Still, Ida didn't come. I, I like how the author decided to break up the day like that. Hopefully you notice things like that in books. Authors do things on purpose. Illustrators do things on purpose. Keeper Sonia came instead. Sonia told Gus that Ida was very sick. Usually there's a way to make a sick bear better, but this time was different. Ida wouldn't hurt, but she would get tired and too weak to swim and play. Then one day, when her body stopped working, Ida would die. Sonia's voice was soft. But the words felt rough to Gus. His insides turned, his chin shook. The sky rumbled. Gus rushed to his friend. Don't go, he growled. Don't go, don't go, don't. Ida growled right back. Together they stomped and snarled. Their growls turned into howls so loud they filled up the zoo, rising higher than the skyscraper, scaring pigeons, surging towards stars. And then they stopped. Two friends folded into one shadow and slumped quietly on the rocks. Two bears' noses sniffled. Two bears' breasts panted. Two bears' hearts echoed each other's beat. I like that picture of this New York City.
A plane roared overhead. Gus and Ida wondered where it was going. They wondered where Ida was going too. They wondered and guessed and imagined as they whispered nose to nose. Wherever I go, said Ida, I bet I'll always smell your fishy breath. This should be funny. That made Gus smile. He wasn't sure if he should, but Ida was giggling too. They let their laughs bounce back and forth between them. These are really pretty pictures. From then on, Ida spent most of the days in her cave. She slept a lot, but she didn't hurt. The keepers took good care of her, and Gus helped. He gathered her favorite toys and fishy treats. He brought her visitors notes. They were, there were growling days and laughing days and days that mixed them up. Sometimes Ida needed a moment alone and sometimes Gus did too. I think that's important. The person that was sick needed a moment alone, but also the person grieving. It's kind of important to notice that. Once again, the pictures are beautiful. I can't turn the page. There we go. But at the end of each day, Gus told, always told Ida, I'll miss you. And Ida always told Gus, I'll miss you too. They would cuddle until the sky grew dark and the lamps of the city clinked on. Then they would wave goodnight a thousand times, then wave a few times more. That's cute. Then one sunny day, while Gus soothed her fur, Ida curled into quiet. Her eyes fluttered shut and they didn't open anymore. Gus pressed one last pat into Ida's paw. The paper shared the news. The city cried. For days, the zoo was filled with goodbyes. And the newspaper says goodbye, Ida. This kind of reminds me of when Bill the lion died. Everyone was so sad in Fort Wayne. Now when click, keys click and shoes clack, Gus crawls out of his cave knowing Ida won't be there. He dives and swims alone and he eats his lunch with Sonia. They roll Ida's favorite yellow ball. So life goes on, but they still try to remember her. Some days Gus forgets. He looks for Ida on the rocks in her cave behind the waterfall. When he remembers she isn't there, he rests in the shadows. But even in the shadows, the sounds of the city reach him. He hears bush, buses groan, trucks rumble, police whistles, taxis honk, pigeons coo. People say, hey, wait, yo, hello, and children laugh. There's people in the alley, so they're looking at me. You saw me looking over. Gus smiles. He steps into the spot where Ida liked to speak, soak in the sun. He listens to their city pulsing around him. He remembers that Ida said, you don't have to see it to feel it. The sidewalk taps and the streets hum. Gus hearts beat, so even if he doesn't see Ida, he feels Ida. And Ida is right there, always. It says, Ida Always is a fictional story inspired by a real pair of polar bears, Ida and Gus, who lived together in New York City Central Park. The two bears swam, played, and cuddled together for many years. They were visited by more than 20 million people from all over the world and deeply cared for their, by their zookeepers. By the time Ida became ill and died in 2011, she had created many wonderful memories for friends to remember her by, and when Gus died two years later, friends cherished their many memories of him too. While I was working on this story, I visited Gus. He sat on a large rock surrounded by the city's skyline, which his head tilted toward the sun. Like other loved ones who had passed away, Gus and Ida will always be with me. Sorry, I was a little bit distracted during this really sad book. There are lots of people near me. They're trying to sit in my area. But this was just a really precious book. I think it talks about something, grief and going through losing a loved one. And this one kind of was even more sad because he saw his friend struggling. Um, sometimes people die suddenly, which is so shocking and sad. And then sometimes we watch them in pain, which it sounds like Ida wasn't in too much pain, but that's also super sad. So I just liked how they talked about grief 
in death, but in a really simplistic way. And I think it was neat that they used animals and the sky was pretty. And then we found out at the end it was based on a true story. So I'll try to see if I can find any links about Ida and Gus and put it below. But that was just a really beautiful story. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Bye.